Hello everybody, welcome. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. Today we are learning about the AC method. We're gonna use the AC method to factor some trinomials. And basically what the AC method is, is we are going to take a trinomial and separate it into a polynomial with four terms and then use a factor by grouping method to complete the factoring process and fully factor it. So we need at least a little bit of knowledge of how to factor by grouping before we use this method. So this is the method that we use when our a does not equal 1, but it's also what we use when we can't take any common factors out of the, tr of the trinomial, right? We can't take a 2 out, we can't take a 3 out, there's, there's no common factors we can take out of all three of these terms, so we're kind of stuck. And that's when we use the AC method. So how we go ahead and start is we, the reason they call it the AC method is the first thing you do is you do A times C. In this case, our A is 2, our C is negative 18, so our A times C is negative 36. Now what we're going to do is we're using this negative 36, and we're looking for two things that multiply together to give us negative 36, but also add together to give us our B, which in this case is negative 9, right? So I'm basically going to split this up, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now, split up 36, and I'm going to write down factors of 36, two things that multiply together to give us 36. 36 and 1. And we're going to see which of these work, which of these we can get, we can add together and get negative 9. So let's see, 18 and 2, this isn't going to work. Let's see, 12 and 3, this will work. Let's see, I have to have minus 12 and plus 3. This is the one, this is the magic numbers, right? And because negative 12 times 3 gives us this negative 36, and negative 12 plus 3 gives us that negative 9. So we're going to use these numbers. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to split up this negative 9x into two separate terms. And they're actually going to end up being negative 12x plus 3x. So these numbers, these magic numbers we find, are the numbers that we use to rewrite this middle term and separate it into four terms so we can factor by grouping. And I'll show you what I mean right now. I'm gonna rewrite this as 2x squared minus 12x plus 3x minus 18. This is still equivalent to this. If I combine these like terms, I get right back up to here. But what we can do now is we can take out a common factor from the first two terms and we can take out a common factor from the last two terms, and we can factor by grouping. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Let's see, what is the common factor, the greatest common factor in the first two terms? Looks like we have 2x. Let's see if that's it, 2x. So then what do I have left? x minus six, it looks like. And we can always test this out. If I plug the 2x back in, I should get back to exactly what those two terms are. Let's see, 2x squared minus 12x, so we're good to go, right? So, what are the greatest common factor between these two terms? I think I can pull out a 3. I think that's what's going to work. 3, and I'm left with x minus 6 here. Okay, sorry about that. So now we have two terms. And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to find a common factor between these two terms and factor that out. And in this case, we have x minus 6 here, and we have x minus 6 here. So we have two terms, and they both have an x minus 6 in them. So we can actually factor out the x minus 6 from both terms. It can come out in front, and what we have left is what? 2x plus 3, and that's going to actually give us the final factored form of this. So we're going to be left with x minus 6, that's going to come out in front, and what we're left with is 2x plus 3. And now, if you want to check your answer, again, you can FOIL this out, and you'll get exactly back up to what you started with. So we know that this is the fully factored form of this trinomial. Alright, so we got one more example just to get a little more practice using the AC method. So I have here a trinomial where a does not equal 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look to see if there's a common factor. In the last example, there was no common factor. 
But in this case, there is a common factor. I can take a three out of all three of these terms. I can factor out a three. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm factoring out the three. I'm basically dividing each term by three. So let's see, I'm left with two x squared minus seven x minus 15. So now what do I have here? So now I have three times a trinomial, but for this trinomial, a is still not equal to one. So I still can't use just the simple method of factoring a trinomial. So I still have to use the AC method. But in this case, factoring this out did make this easier because look what would happen if I had to just use the AC method here, I would have multiplied A times C, which is six times 45. I mean, that's a pretty big number. And then I'm looking at all the factors of whatever that is. I think it's like 270. I have to break up the factors of 270. In this case, it made it a little simpler. I have this three out here chilling and it just stays there throughout the whole process. And in this case, my A and my C are two times 15. So all I have to look at is things that multiply together to give us 30. So that's exactly what, why you always pull out a common factor because it makes your life a lot easier. So A times C, two times negative 15, that equals negative 30. And I'm looking for two things that add up to give us B, but multiply together to give us this A times C. So I'm looking to break up 30 Let's see, what do I have? 30 and one, that's not gonna give me negative seven. Let's see, what else do I have? 10 and three. I think this is actually what's gonna work, right? I can do minus 10 plus three. So what do I do with these magic numbers? I use these to expand this middle term, remember? So I'm gonna rewrite this as a polynomial with four terms and expand this middle term. So I'm actually gonna erase this little part so I can just go ahead and add this step here. So the three stays out in front. What I have left here is two X squared minus 10 X plus three X minus 15. So that's what I have here. I'm gonna go ahead and race this too. Just cause we're done with that. We have our magic numbers, we're good. So now what do we have here? Now we can factor by grouping. This three is still chilling and it's gonna do that in the next step too. It just stays out there the whole time. So we're gonna factor by grouping. So basically I'm looking to take the greatest common factor out from these first two terms and from these last two terms. So from the first two terms, I can take out a two X it looks like. So I gotta be careful with my parentheses here. I got a big parentheses. And then let's see, I got the two X I can take out. Right, because the three still has to be multiplied to everything. So I have to keep track of my parentheses. Two X. What am I left with? X minus five. X minus five. Plus, what can I take out of here? Let's see. Three, I think, is the greatest common factor between these last two terms. So I'm going to take out a three. And what am I left with? X minus five. And now I close that big parentheses. Right, and we these are the same. So we know that we probably did it right because these have to be the same when you factor by grouping. So now what am I gonna do? Let's see here. I have three up here on the outside, so that's still just gonna chill. The three just still hanging out out there. And then what do I have here? I have a big parenthesis still because the three is being multiplied to everything. But remember, I have a common factor between these two terms now. I have these two terms and they share a common factor of x minus five. So I can factor this out to the front. So what I'm left with is, let's see here, x minus five, that comes out to the front. And what I'm left with here is two x plus three. And again, I guess technically these parentheses were unneeded because now we have three things being multiplied and the order of multiplication doesn't technically matter. So I can go ahead and erase those. But either way, it's good to keep track of the parentheses just in case. So yeah, this is the another example of 
factoring using the AC method. Hope this helped anyone watching. Feel free to leave comments, questions, suggestions, that sort of thing, and keep making those brain gains. See you next time.